We think it's time that the lizard community tried reaching out to models. Now model society is more liberal and more educated. We think it's time wizards come out of the bubble. Yeah, that means that international engagement between different countries. We think model society has progressed significantly from the dark ages in which wizard muggle relations were characterized by fear and mistrust. If anything, at this point, model society is less racist and bigoted and mistrusting than wizard society. It's a society in which the statue in the entrance to their government depicts wizards on top of goblins and house elves. This is a society with a rigid, rigid class stratification yeah, yeah. and a society which is, yeah, we agree. We think wizards owe a duty to associate their society with that of muggles and deliver to the benefits of knowing, using, and cooperating with magic. It'd be fucking awesome. And we propose, uh, as the actor, who has been the wizarding well-being the actor in this debate, we firstly reveal ourselves by way of topic two, which these guys feature. We will end world hunger. <laughs> we will end poverty. And Vincent, the heartless bastard he is, wants to off a motion where we support curing disabled people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 
That is not okay, ladies and gentlemen. We don't think it's okay for the Wizarding World to patronise the birth of the Muggle world the way that it has. And when it's out in the open and everyone knows about it, it's less hard to baby muggles and to prevent them from knowing information which they can easily access. Julie. The other thing we'd say is engagement with the Wizarding World happens anyway, but it happens under their side in an undemocratic way. Because the, pro the Prime Minister of Britain knows about the existence of wizards and talks to the Ministry of Magic about the imminent threat of Voldemort. We think it's undemocratic and illegitimate that that information is not that deliberation and just like passing policies and doing taking measures to defend from that is not part of the democratic process where muggles understand those things which need it, which need to be cooperated on, but it only happens at the top. Secondly, benefits of wizards. I'll take a POI whenever because it's close to six minutes. Julian. Sure. Yeah. In the real world, Catholic schools banned Harry Potter because they thought that it was supernatural and red supplies to fear and evil. Now tell everybody in the Marvel world that there is literally a class of human being who is higher than you, who has more capabilities than you, who has more choice than you in your life. How do you think the average human being is going to react to that? And who are they going to turn to? Well, sure, I'll look to my, well, this was going to be my third point of disadvantage, but I'll go with it now. First thing we say is that the elements which will be resentful or distrustful or will try to marginalize the wizards will be marginal. Because they're grateful for us fucking curing malaria. They're great for us that we've brought them, we've brought everyone out of poverty, that their lives have been significantly enriched. But also, they're glad that now we've validated going to a fucking Harry Potter debating tournament. Yeah. The <laughs> Harry Potter fan world will be over the moon. And we also say the wizards are like pretty safe, they've got fucking magic, they can wave their wands and defend themselves from whatever threat. Fourthly, we say that muggles will be less scared once wizarding is normalized uh, uh, with, with muggling society. The reason Lily Potter was bullied was because she was seen as a freak and it wasn't understood. But when that's normalized, instead of being seen as just like a freak, it'll be like, your child is gifted, this is a phenomenon which occurs, this is okay. Final thing we'd say, if it turns out to be really bad, we can cast memory charms. <laughs> so our model is to just sort of test if it works. <laughs> And when they can discuss like different ideas like democracy, when they can discuss the benefits of innovation and technology, and you can engage in that discussion when societies are able to take benefits of their own unique culture for them. Ladies and gentlemen, if it doesn't pan out, we'll just memory charm them. We propose. <laughs>
something accurate to you, or flying around, etc., etc. This being a first world control market by having you just kind of at your every disposal and every call. I don't wake up in the morning with which call with the right hand side, like between Aku and my keys here. Mm -hmm. Maybe like you're actually yeah. mentioning some water for me in the morning, or like you know, like a child because the water went cold. We don't have people that sit in that house all the time. We don't have them in this place in every single little house. Like these slaves are all kinds of possible. Anyway, so then what really doesn't work in terms of providing all these services? Because they weren't born with powers, because there were some other Muslims around them who had a born 
power, the pure work of pure power, they would never achieve any sort of the same status that a wizard possibly could. Because they would always have that expression blue, they would always have the pure um, sense of worth and self. And all their businesses are very happy to do this. Rather 
um, just like some offensive sentiment toward them. But like secondly, we'll say that that is not a homogenous type of reaction that all mothers would have. There'll be some that are grateful and some that are resentful. But on the whole, we think that mothers are more likely to pay attention to like the things that are happening before them and derive gratefulness from that. So the last thing that we were talking about that we were talking about was like indebtedness. I'll do that in my substantive now. So talking about, we think that there are people in this debate that do not fit in those two worlds and have to choose one and prioritize one form of their identity over another, either as a mum or as a wizard if you're a mum before, and choose to segregate yourself from that world without any chance to get a move in between those two worlds. So what am I talking about? Firstly, I'm talking about like people who are mother-born, who by the lottery of birth are born into a family that are mothers and are not of pure blood. Suddenly it is unjustly unfair that those people have to leave their mother parents behind and usually leave that mother world behind when they happen to marry a wizard and fully immerse themselves in that world. We think they have to give up any form of like a normal family life. We can actually talk to your parents about your experiences in schooling. We think that's a really important thing for them when they're growing up. So, or for example, we give you another example of how Petunia was perce was perceiving her sister Lily as somewhat of an alien freak, who maybe she entered another world because she had different characteristics to her and didn't understand that. So, how do we change this? We think that, firstly, when you actually go off to Hogwarts as a mother born under our conception, it's not like you're choosing to fully segregate yourself from that, because the moment that under their world, when you actually go off to Hogwarts for a few years for schooling, you can only like, tell your parents or your family like the very bare details of what you're doing. They just know you're going to some other school to foster like to foster your skills that are like not of an ordinary experience. So if you're afraid of breaking the law of revealing the wizarding existence, you can't tell your family all those things that you want to empathize with them. But also, secondly, like you're like given that the mother race doesn't have any knowledge whatsoever that the wizarding race like exists right now. There is no way for them to even relate to how their children experience things. Under our world, we have given the basic facts. They are able to actually have a type of normal summer relationship where they can empathize with their kids and be able to have that. So, but secondly, we'll say that like, what happens when you leave Hogwarts and you continue to be a mother born wizard? If you happen to marry a wizard or remain in that magical community, you're not able to go back and revisit your mother community and spend the amount of time that you want there for fear of being discovered. We think that allowing these worlds to coexist means you can move between them rather than remaining separate worlds. We don't think that like mother born or like people that are labeled as blood traders need to choose between their identities and prioritize being like supporting a mother world or a wizarding world. We think they can have both of them and equally be like someone that is respected Beautiful identity, we're proud to oppose. <laughs> That's just on camera, Jess. <laughs> so it should be. Right, I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out too. And that. And that. It's so meta. Stephen, Julian got up at the start of this event and wanted to conceptualise this weirdly utopian conception of what it was like to live in the mother world. <laughs> what we see actually is that there's still much hatred, much racism, much discrimination in the mother world. I, as an Asian man, feel oppressed often in that, like, I'm, you know, conceptualised as being like Psy or being like uh, that dude from the community. We also have to concern about who might actually hate gays or deny rights to people who they perceive as different, as counter to the works of God. We see even we have these douchebags who continually discriminate against me by claiming that I hate the same people and I hate Steve. The reactions from these kinds of people against the wizarding world will not be great. Right? They'll see them as different, as people who are against the work of God who are not the same as us. That will, be, like, that will lead to empowering the right, to fear-mongering, towards negative reactions. That will spark the first light in the fire of the destruction between wizard and muggle relations. That's what we see happening on this side of the house. We want to, uh, firstly, uh, we want to just like reiterate, we're happy to push for reforms to how wizards interact with muggles. We're happy to make muggle studies compulsory, reform like, you know, the Ministry of Magic's muggle department, to make uh, more inclusion and understanding. We just don't think that this will work because it will lead to antagonism between two groups. Why? Well, first issue in this debate. What are the benefits to muggles here? Like, how are they affected? They wanted to say that we will, like, magically re, uh, you know, re revolutionize muggle lives because wizard technologies are so great and muggle will, like, you know, will never have to work in the lives again. We say that we can get this through organic change too. In the last, like, couple of decades, poverty across the world has halved. Um, project, uh, like, you know, analysts predict that it would be like non-existent in like another couple of decades. We said muggles are like progressive.
and technologically at a disproportionate rate, because they're having like great increases in their quality of life. We think that they're even having invisibility cloaks, right? Like that's been developed by the Japanese military. We think that all these benefits that wizards can bring have all that has as well. They want to say that they'll get more defense. We like by framing around like you will be able to know when a wizard's gonna come up to you. Right, like that seemed to be the extent of it. First of all, we Change, say, sir. like, whoop de doo you know this. But secondly, oh, we think sir. that that actually decreases your defense, right? It, may, it means that you'll feel more insecure in living in your life. You'll be constantly at fear that there's a wizard around the corner who could get you, that there's going to be a dementor or some kind of magical entity that you can't perceive. We think that that's something that's going to massively depreciate your quality of life, that's going to make you feel massively insecure. That's a massive harm on their side. But also, in terms of benefits and harms, right? We say, they want to say that you defend the, wizard, uh, the mother world. We say, you you exacerbate the um, antagonism towards Muggle World from Dark Wizards, right? You show Dark Wizards that, like, you know, Muggles are different, that they can't react well to Muggles. I'm going to explain this later in my successful video at the end of this speech. They want to say stuff about ghost science. We're not having this debate again. <laughs> like, we just basically say it's actually bad for Muggles too because Muggles can't access being ghosts. That actually detriments Muggle quality of life even further as well because they have the more limited choice now. That's a massive <laughs> problem <laughs> as well. Um, like, shut up. <laughs> they want to say also this improves, improves Muggle knowledge, right? That they're like, you know, you learn more about your natural phenomena and stuff. We ask, first of all, why is this an inherent good? We don't like necessarily believe that. that truth is always the best thing. We think that sometimes knowing that, like, you know, your husband and your wife cheated on you like 50 years in a row is not necessarily going to be in your best self interest. But then we say that we get more knowledge of our side from our world too, right? Why is this the case? Because our model, um, their model stunts R&D. It stunts innovation. It stunts economic development in the Muggle world. Because suddenly, wizards can outcompete muggles in every single enterprise in the like known space, right? There's no incentive anymore to develop technology any further. There's no incentive anymore to in uh, innovate in oh, terms of things such as the internet, in terms of discovering new things, in terms of science and stuff as well. Because wizards now control all the economic capital because they are an inherent power advantage, and also because they are crowding out the market with their own, like you know, not like uh, com like super competitive goods. Second, yeah, sure. Technology and development is largely static in the wizarding world. The government employs everyone and there's no innovation they don't use technology. Yeah. Marvels will be able to provide unique contributions by providing technology which... Okay, so why do you think that it's so static in the wizarding world? Because they feel really comfortable with what they have, right? Because they can also, like, because they feel like they can just magic out anything. We think that that's the kind of narrative that stunts innovation and development that's going to lead to harm to the human world. Marvel wizard integrate our uh, relations. They wouldn't say it would get massive integration because Muggle World would be like, oh my god, you can magic out wine. Come, come at me, Jesus 2.0. We say that this is unlikely to happen, right? Because as we explained, like, like, there are still Order. people who are superstitious, who are religious, who are racist. People like to, uh, who are scared of the other, right? That's why we see, as Nandini pointed out, that they dismiss. Sure. There are still mass pressures against countries such as Asia, uh, Asian countries, not like Asian countries. <laughs> like, the places yeah, like, that are driving the development of human progress because we see them as people who are other than ourselves. We think that there's a much bigger difference as well in terms of how they're going to perceive a race of people who literally can achieve things that we can never achieve. We can like, light fire with their hands, we can never do that. That's going to instead drive fear, right? That's going to drive fear mongering amongst the right wing in particular who already have like superstitious beliefs against this kind of thing. But also, we think what's likely to happen as well, right, is it's going to stir shit in the Marvel world. You're going to get sensational media tabloids coming out and like asking questions, right? Big headlines that grab attention. Things like, what is, is the wizarding world a menace? Or like you know a beauty. Is it like a, a blessing or a curse? We're gonna see like a polarization of this course. We're gonna see things such as like wizards are stealing all our jobs, are stealing all our jobs. We're gonna see the right wing being empowered. And what does that mean? First of all, it means the right wing being empowered in the Marvel world, right? We see more prejudice, more empowerment of people who are prejudiced. But in the wizarding world too, how are they gonna react? We're going to see that they're going to, like, first of all, it's key progress to establish that the wizarding world buys up, like, tabloids instantly, right? They, like, read Rhea's teacher and think it's the words of God. They're going to see this and think it's an exemplary of oh, number actually, They have no British speaking school because they don't learn English and history are very well in high school. That's going to mean that they're going to feel antagonized too. They're going to see this rhetoric, especially given that they already fear muggles to some extent themselves. They're going to feel like muggles are people who are out to get them too, that they don't feel welcomed by muggles, that muggles are people who they can never reconcile with. That's going to empower the far right, the people who believe in blood purity in the wizarding world too. It's going to see a resurgence in dark wizards who have whole, whole prejudices. It's going to see people, like, especially at a point when Voldemort's recently been discredited, we think it's going to, like, re-legitimise that kind of claim that dark wizards have. They want to say that, oh, if this doesn't go well, we can memory charm out of it, right? We think that that does even more damage, because now it's like the wizards 
and admitting that they can't actually integrate with the mother world at all. It's like symbolically sealing a stab on the mother world, saying that it's nothing, it's something to never be entered again. We think that's going to drive that kind of anti mother sentiment, and therefore it's going to lead to resurgence of dark wizardry, it's going to lead to harms and prejudice against models. Finally, you know, at their best case, right? We think their model is principally unjust because it reinforces the birth lottery. It tells Muggle, it um, undermines Muggle's choice because your achievements, your happiness, is always colored by the fact that you can never achieve what great wizards can. That's going to devalue your quality of life and the quality of your achievements because you can never be as great as the wizards were around you. Matt, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, this model harms Muggles. It hurt the wizards. It made everyone feel really, really bad about themselves. We were never proud of the two of us. living in poverty in the state of work. The disutility of some wizards who might feel a little bit awkward having to explain their powers at the pub is vastly outweighed by the three billion people we have rescued from, among other things, world hunger and malaria. And if they hate us so much, if it all goes to shit, we can memory charm them and <laughs> give their malaria back. <laughs> 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 Societies more broadly. We told you all about this. <laughs> These guys wanted to talk to you about malevolent mutations. 
It was unclear whether that would be a Mongol takeover of the Wizarding World or a Wizarding takeover of the Mongol world. So I'll deal with both. On the idea of a Mongol takeover, like the Wizarding World has magical defenses, we can deal with this shit. On the idea of a Wizarding takeover, we gave you a number of reasons why Wizarding culture would be different as a result of this cultural exchange and people actually engaging with each other on this level. First, like wizards might start to appreciate democracy, this thing in the model in the Mongol world. And I wouldn't have to go through another one of these tournaments, like modeling in a functioning justice system every time we have a criminal justice round. <laughs> second, second, like when this cultural interchange exists, when people are living in harmony and muggles and wizards are living on the same streets, like dark wizards are less likely to see muggles as the enemy because it's harder and harder to hate that guy who like your kids go to school with sometimes. It's harder and harder to hate that guy you see in the shop when you're buying food every week. On the idea that this would antagonize dark wizards, no thank you. We have, yeah, but further on this idea of antagonizing dark wizards, Mr. Speaker, we heard that dark wizards, no thank you, were going to be empowered in this society. The dark wizards would manipulate the lack of critical thought on the part of these wizarding, or the other part of the wizarding world in order to more aggressively strike back at the Mongols. See, that's the thing. This debate takes place just after dark wizardry has had its name dragged through the mud by that guy, Voldemort, who we beat, and his followers, who we put in prison forever. The dark wizard hard right is not going to come to power again for the foreseeable future. No, thank you. When we create a more tolerant world, through muggle interchange, we are able to prevent that kind of far-right enterprise from coming to power again. The last thing I want to talk about for society is about economic innovation. Because these guys want to claim that, well, having magic means that there's no incentive for you to innovate, for the muggles to innovate. Society just kind of stands still. First, if that's true, who cares that there's no incentive to innovate anymore? Like, you already have all the possible luxuries of the world open to you. Why the hell would you bother to develop new technology? We don't think that's true, though. Not only because JK said so but also because the wizarding world, in many ways, is a little bit shit and has a lot to learn from the model world. Like the fact that like 80% of wizards are employed by the Ministry of Magic because apparently there's no functioning economy outside like state control. Like the fact that there are no elections that we know of and also like the Minister of Magic presides over the High Court. What the fuck is with that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our interchange would benefit both muggles and the wizarding population. It would bring tolerance, it would bring peace, it would bring an end to world hunger. And if everything went wrong, we could just memory charm it away. <laughs> We're proud of <laughs> 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 Final speaker from the affirmative team, and invite final speaker from team Rachel Diversity to conclude. <laughs> <laughs> Anna's also pretty foreign, so like... <laughs> Sorry, I just threw that out there as well. Shut up. Woo! <laughs> Woo!
like we think that is necessarily patronizing because it means it robs the models of agency. Okay. In that they are never they're going to never perceive that they are capable of addressing poverty. They're going to perceive they were no. never capable of addressing malaria. Firstly because it was cured like without their doing. But secondly because the what agent of that curing was an agent they can fundamentally never identify with and an agent which they perceive to be foreign. So this next thing they told us was that models like, we'll be better off because they'll understand the threat that is posed to them by living kind, but, the, but they'll be able to be protected. In the context of the post Voldemort world, the threat that muggles face from wizards is like actually very, very low as long as these societies <laughs> stay separate. At that point in time, it's not an improvement for the muggles <laughs> to be aware of the massive power that actually exists in this world that they can't control. So, we think like muggles have a lot of fear. But they wanted to mitigate the fear that muggles face by giving muggles protective charms. Like, firstly, we all know that protective defenses aren't perfect, even for wizards who themselves have control over those charms, and for wizards who themselves are able to act in immediate situations and respond to developments as they occur. We think that when the provider of your protection as a muggle is someone else who is necessarily quite distant from you, even if you just got like a protective locket. Madam. That means that you're never actually able to be protected fully from any of the sort of fear that you I'm now actually know exists. The last thing they told us was about memory charms and how like uh, muggles would no longer be exploited slash we wouldn't be able to just put memory charms on them to cure them. We think that like the 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 badness of being exploited and then having a memory charm put on you is probably a lot less than living your whole life in fear of possible exploitation, right? For all their rhetoric that like they wanted to protect muggles, they still aren't able to show that every muggle will perceive total security, yeah, yeah. even if it actually exists. We think that's problematic. For that reason that when Liv challenged right. us to make the to make the comparison between the material improvements in muggles' quality of life and like the perception of safety, we think the perception of safety is the most important thing in this debate because the extent to which you perceive your safety and the extent to which you have faith in your own agency determines the ability and like the extent to which you actually pursue the ends that you perceive as being valuable. If muggles believe they are constantly under threat, if muggles believe that they are un unable to achieve anything, any sort of quality of life becomes meaningful, and all they are, yeah. with, all they are left with is like, sure, a malaria-free existence and a full stomach. But we think that that benefit is still relatively short-lived because our material about polarizing the right of the wizarding world still stands at the end of this debate. Okay. All right, I'll take a go at this one. People like Arthur Weasley <laughs> use the similarities which will probably be emphasised between muggles and wizards and innovate on that and learning are more common on our side. But even if that weren't true, if Asians cure world hunger, then probably be less racism. Okay, what? so... <laughs> 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 Like 
add another equality into the mix. We think that the equalities that exist under the status quo are always going to be less than those that exist between like natural power and supernatural power, right? Yeah. We think in addition, every single equality that exists under the status quo, society tries to quell it. And the reason for that is that equality inequalities are really harmful. Firstly, because they actually stop you from achieving aims. But secondly, the mere perception that you are in, like inequal to someone else limits your ability to lead a fulfilling life because you understand yourself to be constantly inferior. Mr. Speaker, because at the end of this debate, we were able to show that the far right of the wizarding world was going to be fueled by the exposure and the novels were going to be continually suspicious of wizards, we think it is by far the best outcome that the two communities remain segregated. Uh, in what everybody agreed was an extremely high quality debate, but which ultimately was a unanimous decision, we did today to the affirmative team. Woo!